Okay, in the first pile of Blu-rays here is a lot of Scorpion and a hell of a lot of Kino. I went to a Kino sale, there's been a bunch of new Kino films, I did a deep discount order, lots and lots of stuff and it just happens to be Kino. Kino put out a lot of good things. Um, I'm not too sure if the first one here is a Kino or just a Scorpion. I think they, they get uh, really quite related these days. Kino distributes for Scorpion, Kino distributes for Code Red. Um, but anyway, this is Delta Force Chuck Norris. This is um, their recent reissue of the remaster from Ronan Pictures about two years ago. That had a slipcover. I didn't get it at the time because I already had the MGM Blu-ray of it and I just thought, oh look, I don't need, it looks fine. Don't need to upgrade. FOMO? I don't know, I ended up getting it. So here we are again, Delta Force. You all know Delta Force, absolute classic. Chuck Norris, Lee Marvin, um, it is a uh, Scorpion releasing. I don't actually see any Kino logos on this one, so it's probably nothing to do with them on this particular occasion, but it is a Scorpion. So there you go, Delta Force. It, it's one of Chuck Norris's best films in the top five, so I don't need to say much more about it. And I think that was kind of why I decided to do this, because um, it is such a good Chuck Norris, and it's not the only Chuck Norris we're gonna be talking about. We're also gonna be talking about Lone Wolf McCade, another one I had just the MGM old uh, old print. And I did look them up. Look, these things have got a, a superior print to the, oh, what are they like, 2012, 2013 MGM releases. Um, and the covers are much nicer. That also helps sell it to me. Um, and I can get them locally. Local imported Dead End DVD, I've mentioned before. Uh, he got them in, he got them in cheap, so I just thought, why not? I'll get them. Um, Lone, Wolf, Lone Wolf McCade, another very good Chuck Norris, uh, with David Carradine on this one. Um, yeah, a bunch of features and things, 2K scan, blah, brand new audio commentary, on-camera interview. Not a huge amount of things, but it is, you know, just a nice picture and audio upgrade there from Scorpion. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't need complete bells and whistles with this kind of thing, I just want want my chuck so I can see the fist in high definition and like I want I want to see every hair on his beautiful moustache and I'm sure I will with this edition of Lone Wolf McCade and then I just it the, the hits just keep coming now we're definitely into Kino territory now and they did some Chuck Norris these ones are brand new the Octagon um, these next three I was way more happy to upgrade because I had the local blu-rays which are a good decade old and actually look pretty average. Um, these ones, Kino, just absolutely fantastic. They look amazing. So I, I was really happy to get these ones on upgrade. And the poster art underneath and the slipcase, just nice presentations. So this is uh, seven, no, 1980 on the dot. I was gonna say 70s Norris, but it's 1980 on the dot. Uh, 2K Master again, Chuck Norris and uh, Lee Van Cleef. Uh, and Karen Carlson in this one. We get audio commentary by Brandon Bentley and Mike Leader, who are action film historians, apparently. I don't know who they are. Uh, audio commentary by director Eric Carson. Uh, making of the Octagon, that could be interesting. I wonder if it's a new one or if it's an uh, old uh, 80s one. And uh, trailers and all kinds of things. So there you go, the Octagon. Really nice to have that one on an upgrade. You're gonna have that. You're also gonna get a Force of One. Another great poster on this one. The uh, same artwork underneath on that one, they didn't, uh, or at least they didn't flip it if there was different artwork. Um, yeah, this one is from 1979, so we are in 70s Norris territory here. Uh, again, brand new 2K Master. Uh, we've got Jennifer O'Neill in this film, she's there. And um, yeah, this, one's, this one is a particularly good Chuck Norris, uh, one of his um, earlier films. Whereabouts is this? This is probably about the th Third film? No, oh, I don't know. Like he, he, he'd only done a ha handful of films um, up until this point. Maybe not even a handful. Um, so yeah, I can't actually remember where Force of One sits in all that. Uh, directed by um, where is the bloody director's name on this? Uh, Paul Aaron. Directed by Paul Aaron, who also has done an audio commentary on this. So there you go. Nice addition there of a Force of One on Kino, and then of course you got to finish it off with Good Guys Wear Black. Love the uh, sunglasses there. You can see the reflection there of a crime going on in the background. Someone going straight through the windscreen. Fantastic shot. Another slip cover. There's an alternate art underneath, which I'd never seen that before. No, not too sure what that's from, but that's cool. 
and uh, this one is from 1978. So this is quite possibly, is this his first real film? But yeah, the role that launched him into stardom. So um, yeah, he's done uh, Into the Dragon and, and yeah, little bits here and there, but this is his leading movie first film as far as I'm aware. Um, yeah, very cool uh, audio commentary from the same historians, The Making of Good Guys Wear Black, interview with the director Ted Post and trailers and trailers, etc. So very nice, I'm very happy to get these upgrades, get some more Norris into my life. And there's only one person who could be more manly than Chuck Norris. Who is it? It's Charles Bronson. This one I did not get through a uh, Kino sale or anything like that. This is actually very out of print, but uh, I got the taste for some more Kino and I got the taste for some more Bronson. My Bronson collection is, is quite sorely lacking. I've got obviously the, um, you know, some of the Death Wish, I've got all the Death Wish films, I've got a handful of other things, but uh, I've got a few on DVD, but not many on Blu-ray. Like I don't have Mr. Majestic or um, yeah, any of the sort of 80s films besides Death Wish on Blu-ray. This is a thing I needed to fix, but while I was there, I picked up Assassination, a friend of mine, um, was willing to sell his copy and it is as i said very out of print it's kind of going for like the 70 80 dollar mark at the moment which is a bit outrageous i don't know why this one's out of print but it is kino uh, directed by peter hunt um if you don't know this particular one uh 1987 secret service has never been this lethal hard-hitting action cross-country adventure government conspiracy that goes all the way to the top pulse pounding political thriller action superstar charles bronson is at his rugged best as a man on a mission to protect the first lady and uh, from ruthless assassins uh yeah so there you go charles bronson assassination happy to get this one check it out all the kino discs are the same i kind of wish they did put you know nice pictures on disc or something but can't have everything there you go some bronson all right more kino no more bronson less manly now a bit more spooky this one uh, is a brand new release. I'd never heard of it, but a few people when it was listed online was like, I remember that, I saw that when I was a kid. Really spooky, really uh, made, gave me the creeps watching it late at night. And I'm like, okay, cool, James L. Jones. This is the UFO incident. Um, I, love, I love me some alien abduction stuff, particularly 80s type ones, you know, fire in the sky, all that kind of thing. I don't really know what I'm gonna get with it. Um, it, it does look a little bit more, um, campy when you've got sort of the alien standing next to him there like that uh, so yeah I have never seen it um, James L. Jones and Estelle Parsons star as Barney and Betty Hill husband and wife survivors of an alien abduction in this engrossing look at one of the most controversial carefully documented cases of extraterrestrial count encounter in US history the Hills claim that on the 19th of September 1961 in the White Mountains of New Hampshire they were taken aboard a saucer-like spacecraft and examined medically by mysterious humanoid beings with greyish skin. The UFO incident describes with fascinating detail the couple's crippling anxiety, nightmarish visions following their experience, during which they both suffered from amnesia. So yeah, okay, based on a true story or, or an, an account of um, a believed to true story anyway. So there you go, 1975. This is pretty early for James Earl Jones, I imagine. Very pre-Star Wars at this point. Um, yeah, so there you go. Looking forward to checking this one out. It's presented full screen, so I guess that's how it was shot. Is it a TV movie, perhaps? Um, yeah, well, anyway, not too sure, but 1975. And uh, yeah, looking forward to checking this one out. Underneath, same artwork. Yeah, cool. If you've seen it, let me know what you think. Also, upgrading time as well i could upgrade some more dvds and this one uh is from a shout factory four pack and it's one i liked it's very silly but i wanted to upgrade it and this is a treasure of the four crowns i also had this on japanese vhs for a period of time it's a fun film it's very silly um but uh look at that cover fantastic didn't even bother changing because how could you improve on that classic stuff uh reading from the back here it's a canon film of course um a set of mystical artifacts falls into the hand of a diabolical cult leader. Look at that. Absolutely hamming it up. With plans for world domination, it's up to the Devil May Care, JT Striker, that's Tony Anthony, to reclaim them. Together with a ragtag team of mercenaries, Striker must battle terrifying natural and supernatural enemies within a fortress like temple where the stakes may be nothing less than balance between good and evil. Like it reads like some kind of kids' film, and it is only rated PG. 
So there you go, you get a sort of Indiana Jones kind of thing, but a bit more, uh, a bit more nuts. I mean, a bit more canon. It's a bit more canon. It's a canon Indiana Jones. Um, and the interesting thing about this, as it says here, Supervision 3D, and uh, not that I'm going to watch it in this way, but you get options here. One of them being the blue and red glasses, which is cool, but it is also a legit Blu-ray 3D. So if you've got all the gear, uh, you can watch it on a 3D TV. As I understand, it's got the 3D logo there. So yeah, you've got uh, both BD 3D polarized, which is your technical 3D, and anaglyphic red cyan glasses, and the 2D version. So there you go, you're kind of set. Uh, if, you, if you happen to have a 3D TV kicking around, I know they're not making them anymore. Uh, you can watch it that way if you like. So there you go, Treasure of the Four Crowns, fun.